bike and stuff. And uh, now I own this. Uh, this. This is now mine. It is absolutely in horrible condition. I'm excited to share that with you. So I bought this here Vanagon Doka. It's a two wheel drive 1989 turbo diesel that smokes a lot, supposedly drives vaguely. And uh, it's got not a ton of rust. The bed is completely ruined. The back panel's totaled as well. The interior is shot. Uh, there's a lot of bad things about this car, but the price was right. I was able to get it without having to import it directly from a little old lady in Poland myself. And I got it out of, from a guy in New Jersey who brought it to me for uh, a very good price. Um, I paid him in dollar coins and an anvil. So he's not happy by any means, but um, they were bricks of dollar coins, um, about 60 pounds of dollar coins. So he's he's... He's fine. He'll be fine. Anyway, he delivered it. That was crazy. Guys, got the guy to actually drive it all the way here from New Jersey. Not like on a trailer. I wanted to go get it and be reckless and drive it on public streets, but whatever. Anyway, let's go for a cruise and show you the whole car. This is a really fun way to buy a car. Just get yourself a couple of bricks of dollar coins. It's very inconvenient. Looks good. How was the trip? Well, it's uh, it's pretty bad back here. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let's see what it does. We're in neutral. Got to give it some gas. Okay, gotta give it some gas. This anvil was included in the sale. <laughs> you know, that's how we pay for things around here. <laughs> Pretty much definitely needs a battery, but not only does it need a battery, I just took these terminals off without any tools. So that's never a good sign. 55% um, charge fail. Okay, so it's ruined. YouTube stuff. So we're taking our battery from Poland that sucks and replacing it with a used one from AutoZone that's made in Germany. So it fired up and it smokes a lot. But it also runs really, really rough, even for a diesel. Um, and it really won't idle unless you give it gas until it warms up. So that tells me it's an injector. It's just running on three, but when you give it gas, it smooths out. It just needs injectors. So now I gotta find some turbo diesel injectors. But that could be a really easy fix. That is in truly unbelievable condition. And this hatch lid is screwed in with the world's longest bolt. Put that there. Just put that there. And, uh, so I put a new battery in, fires right up, all good. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of things in here look pretty wrong. This is all compressed. I don't think that's supposed to be compressed at all. I think that's supposed to be out like that. This is all ruined, see that? That's in horrible shape. And that does vacuumy things. See, these aren't attached the way they should be. And this looks like it's moved off quite a bit. It has belts and things. I didn't check that it has oil, but it obviously does because it hasn't ruined itself yet. So I guess. And then this is, you know, not good. It's not right. But we'll fix it. Oh, the box is open. Why is the box open? Look at all the things in there. There's a lot of things in there. Same time. <laughs> I believe these are actually from a Subaru. So see, this is this has been cut off the is bumper of a different car. Um, yeah, yeah. This is like just a. And the trim is nice. This is just like the corners of a crappier car, screwed poorly on. So uh, that's bad. You know, we'll have to. And they used only straight lines to mask this off, yeah. which was impressive. There's some parts missing there. Probably. Yeah, there's a little bit of Here's there's a little bit of metal. Sense. There's a little bit of bad metal. You know, this this is probably a hole. I'm this guessing. This latch is available. No, I can't find them, but I'm guessing this is just a straight hole that's been patched by duct tape and Vondo. Oh, it's missing these covers. This is a this is a part. Damn. 
This body is not straight. It's very not straight. <laughs> what are your thoughts, overall thoughts? I mean, the most impressive thing though, one of my favorite Doki. Oh yeah, that's that, the step there. It's the, just the crap that you have to imagine slid around back here. It's, it's hard to put it into perspective. And like, that it banged into the sides and stuff. It did enough that this one, thing. this one's loose. See that? That's gonna rattle every time I drive it. I'll hit it with a swedge hammer right in the middle here, and that'll straighten it out. Oh yeah, but... no, this is a tractor job. You just give her a little. Uh. Oh, that that did it. <laughs> well, there's an exhaust leak somewhere up there. It is idling now. This is hokey. I'm gonna replace all this. That doesn't seem like factory safety wire. First gear? Oh, uh, that might be third gear. No, that was the wrong one. Pick, first. A, pick a different one. Yeah. What's this? I don't know. It's a feature. Oh, it's, it's an ashtray. Oh, sweet. You can smoke drugs in that. You can smuggle things from Poland in that. It's got torque beyond, I mean, real torque. So you think that, what do you think, that, what does the torque mean? It's good. Is it nicer to drive? Oh uh, yeah, for truck stuff for sure. No synchro gear on your Doka. Yeah, yours is one more. Bit of a, a bit cloudy when you put her under load. Yeah, yeah that's some love. That's some love. <laughs> So not only is this just patched, you know, with with uh, RTV, this is this is a Euro headlight or tail light. So it doesn't this have is a, a correction. It, this is an Eastern European. No, because it should have a queer. The, oh, they added this. This was <laughs> they cut the queer out and and glued it in. This had Euro tail lights, but I they was say, probably had to do that for. That's funny. We'll put some U.S. spec ones on. I've got some. So I think it's a piece of a, bo oh, a piece of a, a piece bottle. Oh, a piece of a bottle. <laughs> that tail light lens helps to is protect made the for... lamp. Wow. Eastern. I, I, I noticed that this lower shock bushing is not attached to any sort of uh, lower control arm. There's. It's just. Yeah, we just drove this car. So there's a spacer. I think. You need to, I think you need to oh, put it. There. It's. It's a free. It's wireless. So this makes it really easy to change the bushing. Uh, do you have one? Probably. Yeah, let's get, let's get Even the gas tank's all dented in. Like, people, they, they off-roaded this enough that the standard has been set. This uh, is nice. I tell you, I noticed there's no giant hole. Yeah, you can't put a football through this portion yeah. of the roof. That's a feature. This this is a this is a non-factory gasket. This is made of just some rubber. That's another bottle. Some other things. Some baby's bottle. It's made of things. I imagine that this is fully ruined. So that should be a stud. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be a dash out job. <laughs> That's, I've never seen that. You need wipers. I need wipers. Okay. That's a, it's a nice day. We'll wash it. Not attached to, but in theory, that seat just slides out. We don't even have to take this divider out. This, we, can put, uh, we can put some tours in here. This is just like a big... Screw up here. Quick tour of the front. It's got door panels. They're actually remarkably straight. These haven't broken yet. The floor is the rubber, which is highly desirable. This seat sucks, has no armrests. There's not even armrests on the door. This is hor they, they don't want you to drive this car in comfort. It's a piece of car. That's the jack. Oh no, this is a piece of car. I don't know what this is. It's a mangled piece of car. No, this is a piece of aluminum railing. I don't cool. know what this switch does. This is a household switch of some sort, wired to three wires, which it's a three position switch. It doesn't seem to be catching anything on fire. Uh, the stereo sticks out a little bit, but they, they masked it with, uh, there's some electrical it's tape, so you don't notice it. Masking tape. Yeah. Uh, these are seemingly from an apple in Poland. <laughs> um, and it has a parcel shelf instead of a glove box. Now, what's this big metal like plate up here? Oh, uh, this is, is this is this is where you keep your sheet or your drywall screws. You put them in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got no speakers, so we'll put some late model door no panels on. Speakers. No wow. speakers at all. Well, so where's the, what's that wired to? Well, I, I think the divider probably ends up coming out, but for now we can leave. The, I didn't know you could leave the divider in and have regular two bucket seats. So that's what we're gonna do first. Ooh. Let's.
Is this, is this the way you clean the interior? Yeah. What? No wing windows. No wing windows? It's cleaning up pretty good. Uh, I don't know. The bed is very bad. This thing is in, it's all wavy and stuff. Looks like it's been used slightly. Subtly. Subtly. It's a subtle. Subtle. Patina. I do like the, the cage in the back made with rebar. So you know this is quality construction. And it's been stick welded on. That's right. Like a caveman did it. Keeps the yes. horsepower in. <laughs> Keeps the horsepower in. Look at that door card. That's OG. Yeah. We're going to make a new one out of aluminum or Damascus or something. Love this. That's not original. I mean, a this, leather strap. This is this is like a like belt. a horse belt. <laughs> yeah, with some sheet metal screws. It's European. So we ripped the front seat out already, and we're gonna do two bucket seats out of a Westie. Oh, that's Cause, cool. Because I don't need the seat six, and then I can put cup holders in. But we might leave this for now. We're thinking about leaving this. We could take the can you divider take that out. Yeah, yeah, you have to cut it out. out for sure. It's not an effortless removal, but it yeah. So you have a walkthrough. Oh, yeah. I don't need it. I can, so by leaving that in, I can fill the back of this with so much garbage. Yeah, I can put seriously. all of the tools and things in here. In addition to the space under the seat, there's, there's advantages to this. Remember when you said it was, oh, what is that? That is. Oh, that goes to the CB, the radio antenna. Oh, radio antenna. Yeah, well, we'll put a new one in. We'll get a Midland radio and a GMRS setup. Look at this, it doesn't have a glove box. It has a, a parcel shelf. Nice. That's where you put your small packages. You put your small packages in there. Is this an extra ashtray? Heck oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, Look at that. That's screwdrivers from Poland. You can have it. Yeah. It's a gift. It's your way to support. It's, it's very light. Well, it's that's the Polish are known for their light screwdrivers. I mean, well, I, I found a shock absorber bolt. Just have one, you know, typical. New washer, new nutty thing. And so we'll put that back on so that we can drive the car. Yeah. Got some, uh, I got some fresh light bulbs in these tail light lenses. Uh, we got some North American tail light lenses we'll put on. Hopefully this There's some questionable. What on earth is this? Oh, oh yeah. So these are just some extra, oh, these probably, well, this one probably, I don't know. So that you have to have doing brake lights and they're not, they're, it's not good, but we'll figure it out. How many do you need? Uh, some. What'd you find? There's extra wires. Some, some fuckeries occurred. They soldered this bulb okay, into the rest. thing. So that might be the and shop. Then that's, that might be the other the shop that did the clutch. Oh right? my that gosh. That's horrible. Ooh, similarly not good. Does that have any other bonus? Yes. It has some little, bonus wires. A little bonus wire there. Jumper. And, Whoa. Is it in yeah. horrible condition? Look at this. It's like a bee's nest test. Well, that's a European wasp. <laughs> also, what did you just say? I, I think this just became the first meeting of the Pittsburgh Doka Club. Because you've got a TriStar Synchro Doka. I've got this one, and then Ben, what do you have? I have the Doka too. Synchro Doka. Not a TriStar. So we have all of the tiers. All we've, of the kinds, yes. We've got them all. Yeah, so I just unplugged this. We had this wire and just somehow just, situated in just there. tucked. Nice little jumper over That's cute. to this light. That's super not shady. We're gonna just put some new ones on and see what works and what doesn't. Why? What does that do? Pretty sure it's not supposed to be in that direction. We'll just take it out. So this this needs more rivets to 
Definitely. We can, we can rivet it. They are. Uh, someone really riveted all around here. And there's some rivet holes here and the rivet holes here. And somebody really just liked, they had a riveting good time with this car. <laughs> riveting. Somebody was really into rivets. Really into it. And they certainly didn't use them to secure loads in the bed. Ben went and grabbed us some tires because he just randomly had some 14 inch, uh, these are Noki and Hakapolitas, right? Oh, Bridgestone Blizzax. He had some snow tires from a Vanagon on 14 inch wheels a mile from here. So, that weren't in use. So, perfect. It's got new tires. Right off. They came right off. That's not always good. Taking wheels off, so we're looking under here. And, uh, you know, this brake's pretty good. It drags a little, but apparently it works. And we reattached the shock absorber with a bolt. But look at this. That's a piece of a garden hose. Uh, and they're just using it as a spacer. That's not even supposed to be there. But, uh, whatever. That's, that's there. Looks pretty clean. This hose is missing. It probably goes to the crossover tube. So if we fill it full of diesel, it'll spill everywhere, which is good to know. Well, you gotta put that back on. That's probably gonna let all of the salt in. Hey, hey, those work. Even this one, which is just a piece of a plastic bottle, sheet metal screwed over an exposed light bulb. Oh, I broke it. Well, it did work. <laughs> <laughs> It did work. Oh, ben work. here is doing some soldering, putting some super bright LEDs on so that our lights work. Hopefully. Diagnosing things, and you know, this, this is just this. If we pull on it enough, maybe we'll... You're probably going to pull that little toggle switch That's off. That's probably what it is. We won't pull on it. We'll pull it from the other end. Yeah, see if you can find it under the car. Oh my goodness. We don't need this. Optional. We have all of these wires. Some of them are thick. And we have some features. So I'm just tracing some things here, and you got, you know, obviously this probably ground wire. No, nope, that's red and brown. Uh, it, it's cut, doesn't go to anything. And then you got, you got this one here, which is a brown wire that goes to a red wire. Brown usually is ground, red is usually positive, and they, they meet together here happily with a fuse with thing of the majigger on them. And, uh, well, this is just scary. So I'll drink more alcohol and look at it tomorrow. Just in. There's no coolant in the entire system, and we've been driving it. So that's always a good thing. You come back here and you find that you can stick your finger all the way down in there, and there's just nothing but mud. It contains some mud. <laughs> Giant rocks of crack cocaine. So we're going to go ahead and put some of this Pristone Super Flush in, because the system seems to be empty, so we might as well fill it with acid and then some water. This was that dash switch. It looks like it's out of a home, and... uh we just ripped all of this wire out. I don't know what it really went to, but we didn't need it. And going through the wiring harness now and, you know, fixing things like this was the spade to the temperature uh, gauge. And it was pretty bad. So doing pinout tests, making sure everything's good and trying to figure out why some of these wires. And it was just twisted wires with red electrical tape vaguely on it. So I'm going to repair this, but like... How is the whole car like okay. this? Well, I'm testing this pump by electrifying it with this Milwaukee battery, and the pump works. So, And it heated up real fast and melted. That was weird. Something's wrong. Just a wire that terminates nowhere. And then I spent a bunch of time looking, and oh, what's that? Oh, well, that's the terminal. So I guess I just put that back on there, and it's good. Probably need a new one of this. Definitely need a new one of this. I spent like a whole day wiring. And honestly, I think I only moved one wire. But this thing was all hacked up. Anyway, I think it's good. So now I'm going to attach the battery and watch all the smoke come out as the entire harness melts down in front of me. Hopefully that Should doesn't No happen. sparks and not an enormous amount of fire. No sparks. No enormous amount of fire. That's good news. Okay, the next thing to check is whether or not the turbo is bad. Believe it or not, I'm kind of vaguely hoping the turbo is bad because the turbo being bad would account for the smoking issue without having to replace the entire engine. A turbo is available. It's like 600 bucks. Um, relatively easy bolts on, I believe. So, so we've got this thin spot in the charge pipe, and that's definitely some kind of a hole. So when this is running, you know, 8 or 10 PSI through there, I think the air is coming out. And that's meaning the engine thinks it's getting more air, so it's throwing more fuel at it, and that's what's making it smoky. So I think we just needed this. But for now, we're going to solve it using some of this gray tape. 
that's professional right that'll that'll work probably uh, you know uh doing the things and i can i can play with the shaft a little and sometimes you got to play with the shaft a little now we want to see some movement but we don't really want to um excite it too much so just a little bit of movement's fine but if we're really getting it going we can't put that on video and we'll need a new so, turbo here we go this is the turbo and it moves but i don't think it moves a lot it spins nice it seems pretty good. Hey, okay, so it looks like this is what's bad. This is the LDA. This controls fuel enrichment. And this should move uh, when the engine runs like that. But it should also run if I put, I believe, if I put 10 PSI into it, it should pump it out. And it's trying. So my thought is that the diaphragm in there is bad. We can get one, rebuild it, and then the LDA will do LDA things. I don't know what those are, but it will work. I went ahead and got these seats out of the barn where I keep these seats. And we're gonna convert this from that front bench seat into a set of late model, adjustable armrest, gray seats out of a Westie. That should work. Let's take this night. seat out, cause this seat sucks. They literally just like, I don't know. I guess this is a polster dong, but it's kind of just draped over there with a loose square of foam in it. It counts. Well, we just went for a spin, drove it about uh, five miles. It went pretty good. Um, it's making good power. It's shifting nicely. The brakes are good. Suspension's good. Um, it really did stop smoking for a little bit there. It was horrible on startup, but once it warmed up, it was good. The glow plug light works exactly the way it should. It goes out. It doesn't come back on when you fire back up a hot engine. We just put three gallons of fuel in it because I don't think the crossover tube's all good, but I'll check over that. Um, I think I found something. So first off, that pipe i thought was the charge pipe isn't the charge pipe it's the intake pipe so pressure doesn't matter there but we did see that the lda moved when the engine was running it wasn't very responsive and there's a lot of slop in the ball so it, it that needs rebuilt but let me show you what i found so the story here is that he had taken out three of the four injectors rebuilt them whatever that means uh involving he described it as sandpaper and bending something and then he said, I was missing one of the somethings, but he put it back together anyway. And for whatever reason, he never took out this injector. Well, anyway, I cleaned the engine, which is an important thing to do. And I'm seeing that that injector is all wet. There's all kinds of fuel, just straight fuel dripping down there. Good bit of it too. So that has me thinking that, you know, it needs injectors. Luckily, I ordered some injectors. They'll be here in a couple of days, and hopefully that fixes it. I also put a new vacuum line on here, which is probably what made the LDA work. I don't know what that is or even what LDA means, but you need that. Just fixed the speedometer. It was really easy. It wasn't attached to Check anything. Check down at the hub here to see that this still had a square hole in it and wasn't all rounded out. So I then popped that bad boy off and put a drill on here, and it wasn't turning the speedo. So I popped the thingamajigger off and... The cable was loose back there, plugged it in. Now when I turn the drill down here, it makes that needle go up. So, yay. Let's get under here at this exhaust. It's in horrible shape. So not only is she rusted out there, but like, that's like a piece of a soup can with some hose clamps over it. And then all of the aeration holes here for speed. So I probably need a that. I hope it comes off there. Transmission code DM11. We'll find out some info on that. This is the reverse light switch, which I don't think is working because everywhere where I've found that they've used this white heat shrinky cable, it's been done horribly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make the assumption that's bad. This particular brake pipe doesn't look to be in good shape. Um, I would describe it as, wow. It's, how many layers is it supposed to have? It has several. Wow dissolving okay i want to drive this car so i need to stop doing that oh oh it's so satisfying though oh it's so satisfying let's do a little more a little bit more oh yeah oh yeah we're gonna need to build with that this is a truck and it's gonna be used as a truck so i'm not trying to treat it as not a truck so it gets truck things done to it that means things get done hastily and inexpensively we got this reverse light, which I found in a drawer at Dan's house. It's apparently brand new. 
and it has a retail value of $10 new. So I gave him $1 for it. And I'm going to poke holes in things. I'm going to drill right into this body, but I will put a I will put a grommet on it because it needs to be done hastily and poorly. It's a very critical component of doing truck stuff. It's time to poke some holes. I poked this hole. This hole doesn't matter, but I made the hole bigger than I wanted to because I put a rivet nut in it. So that way, well, bam! I'll do the thing with the thing, and I'll have a permanent nut there so I can unscrew that. Now I need to put a very critical hole somewhere in the body here, which I'm going to put a grommet in. Now it's a top quality grommet that I got at Harbor Freight, so we know it's going to last. And I don't feel bad about it because the people of Poland already drilled a hole somewhere around here, and then they painted over it with this white house paint. This was not the original color of the car. So because the standard has been set, and the standard is so low, we're going to poke a hole right about here. Now I went ahead and made sure that I didn't look at what's on the other side of this, so if we do drill into it, it I can at least plead ignorance. I have no concept of what's back there. Let's poke well, a hole. That seems uh, where, right? Uh, well, that seems good. Oh, let it move. That's a good spot. Yep, that's a hole. Yay, it's all wired. Well, it's not wired in, but it's mounted. It's kind of pointed downwards. That'll work. There's a hole. It goes through the hole. We'll deal with it later. You dokey. Look at this. I got all of the, those off of the this for the tail lights because apparently on a Euro car, these are in different positions. So I just sort of need to move them around in here. I used my pin things. I get these on Amazon. I'll put the link. And uh, now I can clean these and put them all back in a different spot. And then maybe they'll work? I don't know. That doesn't make on sense. this side, the port side here, we've just got like a... A uh, gray and white with a white and black with a gray and white, but I'm not sure what's gray and what's white and what's black. And this is this is this is garbage. <laughs> this sucks. This makes no sense. Some wires that seem to suck, and uh, you know, replacing the that thing. But we're back behind this fuse block. Fun things to note: they replaced every fuse with either a 25 or a 30 amp, pretty much. So that's definitely wrong and indicator of an issue. So you drop down the old fuse panel here. And back there, you find all of the ground lugs, and they look in, you know, deplorable condition. Ooh, look at this one. That's a heavy-duty one. What's that go to? That's going to be fun to find out. Anyway, uh, there's a add-on fusey device here. Into a real nice thick wire. So that's probably dangerous, and you got all kinds of extra grounds. We'll get curious about them. And, uh, you know, do a little digging. Clean up all those grounds. That's thing number one. Every Vanagon needs all of the grounds clean. Do they have Black Widow spiders in Poland? Because I'm pretty sure that's a Black Widow spider. Anyway, I think I got this spider from Poland. If anyone wants it, they can have it back. I'll ship it to you. It's currently not dead. It will be soon. <laughs> that's what you want. A nice, clean grounding star. Let's put back it back. And look at that one. I'd say it's that guy. Guess what? It is that guy. That guy's got problems. Believable. Um, but I think the actual fuse block is bad. Plus, like the whole thing is packed full of 30 amp fuses. There's like no 30 amp fuses on this thing from the factory. So that tells me there were issues. So I went ahead and got another one because I have one. And I went and found myself one of them diagrams. And I filled the whole thing up with uh, brand new fuses from the Amazons. And what's nice about getting some brand new fuses from the Amazons is I can trust all these work. Also, there's supposed to be two that are blank, and <laughs> well, they're not blank on this one. They're full of 30s. So, um, you know, the average fuse is a red, which is a 10, and uh, this one's full of 30s. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this guy on. This is a known good device, and uh, I don't know, maybe it fixes it, maybe it doesn't. But what it definitely does is sets me up for success in the future. Well, friends, it's another day, and I'm back to working on the Doka. I finally got some parts from our friends at FCP Euro. We got some new injectors that should be the right ones for this car. It's kind of hard to find them because this car wasn't sold in America, or this engine wasn't sold in America. But I think these are the right injectors, and our friends at FCP Euro had them which is awesome. So hopefully that will make this weird diesel Volkswagen Doka not smoke as much. Let's put injectors in. I have no idea how to do well, that. Here's what we pulled out. Apparently the story was he'd rebuilt three of them, whatever that means. But three of them do look good and one of them looks horrible. Now, I don't know what good versus horrible is, but these ones are clean and that one is very much not. Look at it. It's disgusting. Yeah. So, I don't know. Also, these two are dry, but these two are covered in fuel. So, that has me thinking, 
we had some leaky injectors. The part number is the same between the used, the old injectors and the new ones, so I'm pretty confident in it. It is part number KCA30S36-4. And these ones are original VW, yada, yada, yada. They have some different numbers on them, but these also say the same Bosch part number, uh, the KCA30S36-4. Uh, they both say they're 155 bar, so these should, these should be compatible. New injectors are in, new whatever this is line is in. And uh, yeah, everything's good. The LDA ball is completely ruined. This is horrible. All that sucks. Uh, we're gonna turn the electricity and power and fuel on and crack a couple of injectors, get some fuel flowing and then probably fire up and make a big cloud of smoke and find out we didn't fix anything. Let things, give it a go. Crank her up. Probably it for this chapter of Vanagon Doka Life, uh, all that stuff. But uh, we did get it running. It uh, still smokes an enormous amount, so it still has issues. But um, it does seem to run smoother once it's up and running and, uh, you know, up to temperature. We adjusted the idle a lot. It was way off by, like, I'd go with an inch. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're not getting full throttle either. I think that's probably way off too. But the point is... Um, the engine does run, uh, but we didn't fix the problem. So, oh, all the taillights work, like, completely. I fixed that. It, it is correct. And there's a reverse light, even. That's been wired in, so that's pretty good. Um, anyway, this is probably the end of this chapter. I don't know where we're going to end this video, but I'm going to guess with about here. So, uh, cheers, like, subscribe, smash that notification button. I don't know what I'm supposed to say.